Afternoon all, Webby Sports Trail up here on our beautiful sunny Tenerife on a Saturday afternoon. A very, very, very quick blog. You know what it is. Terry, my number two. He is doing a 15 question and a 15 answers for Liverpool Football Club. Oh, you know what he's like. 15 questions, 15 answers. Everybody has 15 minutes of fame. And Terry is doing this right now. You've got to tune in. It is absolutely phenomenal. Terry, take it away, big man. Good morning, everybody. You're watching Webby Sports Roundup on YouTube and another edition of 15 Minutes of Fame. Um, before I go any further, if you like what you see, please click on the subscribe button. For the last, what, near on 12 months, we've done loads of videos, loads of different content, some good, some not so good. So if you get a chance, please click on there and, and have a look at the other videos we've done. Uh, also, if you're on Facebook, please click on there, have a look on it. Foggy looks after it. He's a Spurs fan for his uh, troubles, but it's not his fault. Um, and give him a bit of love as well, please. Um, well, I've got no one with me this morning, so basically I've been asked quite a few times um, the questions that I ask people, why don't I answer them? So here I am. So I'm going to do it for you now. Um, Right, number one, my favourite current player. Well, obviously I'm a Liverpool supporter. My name's Terry, which I forgot to mention. Um, it's got to be Virgil van Dijk. Marvellous player, leader. In my opinion, probably the best centre-back in the world. Getting back to his best now after that injury uh, a few years back when Pickford decided to take him out. And after his performance in the League Cup final against Chelsea sort of last weekend... I don't think anyone out there has, has, has basically got anything on him at all, centre-back-wise. So, yeah, Virgil van Dijk. Um, your all-time favourite Liverpool player? Well, if I go back and back and back and back, it probably will be a grand soonest. But for me, my era, uh, played a very bang-average Liverpool team a lot of the time. It's got to be Steven Gerrard. Um, unbelievable player. Shame he never won that Premier League. He won everything else. So, yeah, Steven Gerrard. Best signing for your club? Well, <laughs> we've made a few good signings over the years. I mean, like your Luis Suarez, your Torres, your Salas, Mane, Firmino. There's, there's, there's so many to mention. Um, it's, a, it's a tricky one. Really is a tricky one. But personally, for, you know, what we got out of, the, uh, of signing him, um, it's got to be Virgil van Dijk again because he transformed our team. We sold Coutinho for over 140 odd million pound. We brought in Allison. We brought in Van Dijk. A change in our pocket, and we went on that year to to, to obviously win the European Cup. I think the following season won the European Cup, won the Premier League for the first time in 30 years, and then we've won every other trophy bar the Europa League and the Europa League Conference in that time. So yeah, Virgil van Dijk. Um, Club's most disappointing signing. Well, we've had a few of these over the years, I can tell you. Um, it's an hard one. It really is. Because there's so many. Um, I don't know. Uh, I'll come back to that one in a minute. Um, best away ground, including Europe, that I've been to. Um, now, I've been very fortunate. I've done a hell of a lot of European aways with Liverpool. I've done a few games watching Li uh, England as well. So I've been to most of the major sort of grounds in Europe. Um, probably Atletico Madrid, the new Wanda Stadium. We was there in 2019 for the Champions League final. Uh, great day. I've since been to the stadium three times. Uh, two wins and a loss. So um, Bayern Munich's a great stadium. Maybe the new Real Madrid when it's completed will be, be up there. But yeah, for me personally, it's got to be um, the Wanda in, um, in Madrid. Um, best game I've ever been to? Well, I'm quite fortunate. I was in Istanbul uh, for that game. I was in Dortmund for that game against Dalabes. Um I was at Anfield for the 4 0 against Barcelona. But if you ask me deep down, the best game I've ever been to probably would be Istanbul. I mean, obviously, we were a bang average Liverpool team. I think we finished 30 odd points behind Chelsea that season. And to actually play the best team by far for that period in AC Milan and, and we know we did I would have to say uh, the Champions League final 2005 um, club you dislike the most <laughs> well 
there's been a few over the years, but I think it's got to be Man United. I mean, I've got nothing personally against Man United supporters. I've got a few friends who are Man United supporters, but obviously with the history and the rivalry between the two clubs, I think if we both played in the Championship, it'd still be the biggest game in world football. Um, so on that basis, um, the club I dislike the most is Man United, purely on the rivalry. Uh, other than that, um, yeah, we've all got some bad fans. <laughs> we've all got some good fans, but um, just just generally the rivalry over the years. Um, do I have a favourite second team? Well, I was born sort of a stone's throw from Upton Park, so my local team was West Ham growing up as a kid. So I'd have to say West Ham. Obviously, I like seeing West Ham do well. Most of the family have season tickets or work at the Grand. Uh, the other half, uh, Vicky, she's West Ham. The father-in-law, Bobby's West Ham. My daughter, Ju uh, Scarlett, is a bit of a Judas. She's the 10-year-old. She's West Ham. So, yep, yeah, West Ham United. Fans you dislike the most. Right. It's got to be Man United, purely on the basis of the rivalry. Other than that, again, as I said before, there's a lot of things I, you know, a lot of fans, I, I don't mind Man United fans, because I've got a lot of friends who are Man United fans. But it would be Man United. I mean, when Mourinho was at Chelsea, Chelsea were, are up there. Obviously now City are doing what they're doing. Obviously you go with City. But yeah, Man United. What player would you like to sign if you could sign anyone? Well, the obvious one out there is Haaland at the moment because obviously he's banging in goals for fun. You've got Kevin De Bruyne, who's an exceptional player. Um, but the one I'd like to see, which I believe we had a chance of signing him, would be Jude Bellingham. Because I think Jude Bellingham was slot into this Liverpool team in midfield and take us to another level on the basis we kept Mo Salah. Um, obviously, if we can get him Pape as well, happy days, but that's not going to happen. So yeah, Jude Bellingham. Uh, what manager would you like to have if you could have anyone? We've got him. Simple as that. Jurgen Klopp. Um, if he has to take a year out and then maybe come back in a year's time, happy days. But for what he's done for our football club uh, and also what Jurgen Klopp done for Dortmund as well, because obviously in Germany, as you know, when the season starts, they give the championship trophy to Bayern Munich and it's a case who finishes second. But when he was at Dortmund uh, all them years ago, he broke the monopoly he won him a few leagues. He got him to a Champions League final. So, and obviously what he's done at Liverpool has been, been unbelievable. So Jurgen Klopp, no one else, I'm afraid. In their prime, Messi or Ronaldo? <laughs> it's got to be uh, Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi for me is, is he's won it all, including the World Cup. Um, he's won the, what, Copa de America thing. They have like their version of the sort of European Championships. He's won everything you can possibly win in football. I never see him on the floor acting. I never see him winking, getting players sent off in World Cups. Remember the Wayne Rooney one, Ronaldo? Um, he's got no arrogance about him. I think, generally speaking, all round, he's an exceptional football player and he carries himself well on and off the pitch. Where Ronaldo, he's just chasing the money all the time, isn't he? I mean, he came back to Man United when he was, what, 37, 38. He's well past his best. He weren't up to scratch playing for Juve no more. That's why they got rid Man U took him on, on a sentiment basis, purely on that. I don't think on football terms. And um, obviously, Ten Hag come in, saw it as a bat, bit of a whinger, spent a lot of time on the bench. And within, what, X amount of months, he's obviously um, on the gravy train to Saudi Arabia, which I find embarrassing. I really do. But there again, fair play to him. He can still pick up under grand a, well, under grand a day or a million pound a week, whatever he's on. That'd be days to him. But it's always got to be Lionel Messi. Um, would you like Harry Maguire in your team? Definitely not. I would never have Harry Maguire anywhere near our team. I don't think he's a Premiership player anymore, personally. Yeah, he was okay when he was at you know, Leicester, but he was playing in a very good Leicester team um, at the time. He's gone to Man United. Unfortunately, he's in a very poor Man United team. And um, he, he's, he's been found out. And obviously, when he plays from England, he don't let England down. But again, I think playing in the Premier League... Even when you're playing against uh, probably a Sheffield United or a Luton or a Burnley, I think they're harder games than playing against Lithuania, the Faroe Islands and, and, and most of the teams we seem to get in a qualifying group. So, uh, Aaron Maguire? No, mate. Do you rate Gareth Southgate as an England manager? Um, I've never rated Gareth Southgate. I know he won, a, I think, a League Cup at Middlesbrough, but for me, he's just a jobsworth. He really is. He's only got the job because he's a yes-man. 
if we could get rid of him tomorrow and bring a Harry Redknapp in, a proper manager, uh, 100%. But he's just out there. He's just, now that we live in this woke society, he's the ideal manager for England. And he's tactically useless against Croatia in the World Cup a few years ago. We went 1-0 up after four minutes or five minutes and then sat behind the ball against a very bang average Croatia team. Um, and then against Italy in the Euros, was it 1-0 after two minutes, Luke Shaw, I remember, against Italian team that's not qualified for the last two World Cups. And again, we, we should have had that, that game done and dusted by half time. So on that basis, no, I don't. Um, another question I started asking the other week was, if you was playing football now or in the past and you could have come up against a player that you would have just liked to have gone straight through him, left him on the floor, like, who would it be? For me, it's always been someone like a Dennis Wise, irritating football player, about five foot nothing, and how he used to get away with what he did, I would never know, but I would love to have the opportunity to play against him. I would like to say Vinnie Jones, but I know Vinnie Jones would have got up and probably knocked my head off. A Roy Key, maybe. Um, but probably nowadays, it would be Bruno Fernandes, because the play acting, the theatrics... From a grown man, it's embarrassing. It really is. Um, sooner or later that the sort of Premier League bring maybe a fine or a ban in for play acting after the game, it yeah, cut it all out. So, yeah, Bruno Fernandes, 100%. I would love to play against him now. Give me that 10 seconds to go straight for him. He won't do it again, trust me. Um, last of all, the financial fair play. What's my take on it? Well, we've done a lot of videos recently about the financial fair play. And obviously Everton's just recently got four points back, but I've got a feeling in a few weeks' time to be taking them four points back off them again. Um, Nottingham Forest are up for it. I believe Chelsea are up for it. People say about the financial fair play when Abramovich took over at Chelsea. Well, that was prior to 2009, and then you never had uh, the, fi- the sort of, what was it called, the FFP, the financial fair play, in, in, in existence then. So what Chelsea were doing, they weren't doing anything particularly wrong. Where the money was coming from, we know, or do we know. Um, but they were winning leagues, they weren't breaking no rules. Now, obviously, you've, you've got a few teams out there who basically have been you know, bending the rules, over-inflated sponsorship. I think what they've got to do now, UEFA, is either implement this financial fair play properly, um, there's no loopholes on it, no appealing, if you're caught spending more that's coming in, then basically you are dock points. I can't see the point, personally, of you know looking at, say, Man City from 2009. It should have been done in 2009 or 2010. Our clubs have been apparently allowed to you know, get over-inflated sponsorship and, and, and do what they're doing for the last near on, what, 15, 16 years? I never know. So I think the fault lies with UEFA. They've got to implement it properly. Um, also, I think the Premier League need to get their finger out their backside uh, and start running the league properly because we're supposed to have the best league in the world. And it's going to look quite embarrassing this season if, you know, Forest, Everton, Chelsea, and then a the Man City fiasco uh, is carrying on into the summer during the Euros because teams won't even know if they're coming or going, if they're up or down, or I don't know. Um, right, going back to my other question I never answered. Uh, most disappointing signing for the club that's a really hard one because I've never really thought about you know one player who's been really poor for us um, as a stab I would say Aquilani he came in for big money he was supposed to replace Xavi Alonso he was always injured uh, and didn't do anything really at all unfortunately uh, but even though he had a, a better career when he went back to Italy and one that springs to mind Mario Balotelli I think Mario Balotelli will look back on his career and think what could have been. Um, instead of letting off fireworks in your bedroom or walking around in silly coats and driving silly cars and being the clan, uh, look where you are now, lad. I mean, you, you, you could have been playing in the in Euros this summer. That's if it is qualified. I'm not even sure if they have, are they? Um, anyway, that's all for today. That's from me. As I said at the start, if you like what you see, like what you hear, please click on the subscribe button. There's loads of other stuff on there. And um, yeah, and I'll be back doing a 15 minutes of fame with other people when I'm out and about. But um, for the time being, thanks for watching. All the best.
and um, up the mighty rents. Cheers.